Thank you, everybody. Uh, children, you can go with Angela. This sermon today, as you can see from the title, is Stop Clinging, Just Go, and Continue Christ's Mission. In this sermon series, um, on John chapter 20 and 21, I, which I'm now going to call the Encountering Jesus series, Encountering Jesus series, uh, we've seen in the first sermon, which was called Alive from the Dead, we saw there that the Apostle John, when he discovered the tomb of Jesus, had, when he saw the, the linen cloths were there, but there was no body, he, he, the body of Jesus was gone. He saw the handkerchief that was around Jesus' head folded up neatly. And when he saw that at that guarded tomb, it says he believed. Finally, that was enough for him to believe. And I exhorted you, I encouraged you in that sermon. If you've heard lots of sermons, if you've had people telling you, believe, 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 explaining why you believe the Bible, but you haven't come to believe yet, I exhorted you, you've got to have that experience yourself. You've got to go and look at it yourself. Think about the word yourself. Pray to God yourself. Because all that people telling, 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 if it hasn't given you that faith you need, you have to experience. You have to have an experience with God. So seek that experience. So that was the first sermon in the series. The second sermon in the series uh, was called One Thing That Is Most Needed. The one thing that is most needed. And we noticed how Mary Magdalene, she was the first to the tomb and the last to leave. We noticed that she was so focused on the one thing that really mattered the missing body of Jesus, and I encourage you all to focus on the one thing in your spiritual life that matters the most, to focus on that one thing. And in the third sermon in this Encountering Jesus series, it was called, Are You Missing the Presence of Jesus? Are You Missing the Presence of Jesus? And we sort of speculated about why Jesus was standing right in front of Mary, talking to her, and she missed his presence at first. She didn't know that it was him. And I ask you to consider whether you're missing the spiritual presence of Jesus in any way. And encourage you that God wants you to experience his presence. Jesus wants us to experience his presence. And I exhorted you, don't miss, don't miss. Don't miss the presence of Jesus. A closer relationship with him for anything in the whole world. Seek that relationship, that presence of God with all your heart, all your mind and all your strength. And then last week, the fourth sermon in this series, um, it was called When One Word Changed Everything for Mary Magdalene. And that one word was her name, Mary. And it changed everything. And, and, I, and we rejoiced with Mary. We rejoiced with her at, when she saw the risen Lord. We also previously wept with her when she didn't know where the body of Jesus was and, and she'd lost the, her hope and her joy, her relationship. And then I exhorted us in all of our relationships, the most important relationships in our lives, so important that we weep with those who weep. We empathise. We walk in the shoes of those we love when they're down. And when they're up, we celebrate with them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. And today, we are going, the sermon is stop clinging, just go and continue the mission of Jesus. And the question that I'll be 
asking us all today, the question I want us to consider is who or what are we clinging to when Jesus just wants us to go and tell others about him and continue his mission? Who or what are we clinging to when Jesus just wants us to go and tell others about his mission? So if we open our Bibles to John chapter 20 again, and it's verse 17 of John chapter 20. And it says, Jesus said to her, Jesus said to Mary Magdalene, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father and to my God and your God. When I read verse 17, um, and when theologians read verse 17, we like to think about a whole lot of theological questions. We like to ponder things. Questions like, when he said to Mary, Jesus said to Mary, do not cling to me, was she already clinging to him or was she about to cling to him? Some translations, like the King James says, do not touch me. Did he mean, just don't touch me? Or did he mean, stop, don't hold on to me? Most theologians say that he meant, do not cling to me. Another thing that I like to ponder, and theologians like to ponder when they look at this verse is, was Jesus ascending just right then after he spoke to Mary? He says, I am ascending. I am ascending, or was, was he going to hang around on earth for 40 days bef until we, know, we hear about the famous ascension 40 days after where he ascends and they see him ascend in a cloud? And, and if, if, he, if he was going to ascend 40 days after, then why did he say, Mary, do not cling to me? I mean, he had time, he had 40 days. So we ponder these these questions, could Jesus have ascended several times, gone up and down, up and down, during that 40 days, as we have about eight records of him visiting the disciples during those 40 days. What did he do if, if he didn't go, I am ascending, if he didn't go then? I think most theologians say that he didn't ascend until 40 days later. I'm not sure about that. I'm personally not sure about that. The other theological issue we ponder here is, does Jesus have a God? Because he says, I go to my God. I'm ascending to my God. The, that, that's another issue people think about. And these verses, John 3.20, um, or Revelation 3.20, sorry, says, he who overcomes... I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he should go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God, this is Jesus speaking, and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem which comes down out of heaven from my God, and I will write on him my new name. Ephesians 1.3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Ephesians 1.17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. So there's, many, there's a few other scriptures that are saying Jesus has a God. So theologians discuss these things. I, I'd ruin the whole sermon, I think, if I tried to unravel, uh, discuss that point and give you a... Uh, an explanation. So what I want to do is ask you the question, was Mary in that moment contemplating all of these theological questions? I don't think, some of us like to think about and cling to be theologically correct. Some of us like to cling to getting the right understanding of the Bible and that's good. But at this moment, 
Mary wasn't doing that. Mary wasn't trying to figure everything out. I think it was highly unlikely. She was probably just struggling with the fact that Jesus was telling her, I'm going away again. I'm ascending to my Father. Can you imagine how the joy she had seeing him alive and then now he's saying to her, I am ascending to my Father. She had just been reunited with him and now he says he's going away again. She would have desired to stay with him. Really, so much she would have desired to be with him. And here he says he's going away. And he says to her, go. Go, stop clinging to me. Go and tell my disciples I am ascending. And she does. Verse 18, she obeys. She obeys. Verse 18 says, Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. As much as she wanted to stay and cling, she went. She obeyed. We, as believers, have some go commands as well, don't we? We have some go commands from Jesus, from the scriptures. And here's one of the most famous, which Angela read. And it's, this is a very important part of the mission. It's a very significant mission statement for us as a church. And that is, not that one. <laughs> Where is it? Uh, it is, okay, it's not there. It's Matthew 28. What did Angela read? Matthew 28. Somebody's memorized this verse, I think. It says, verse 19, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all things that I have commanded you and lo I am with you even to the end of the age go and make disciples there's one of our go commands baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit teaching them all things that I have commanded you are we going or are we clinging to, to something another go command is in John 15 16 let me read this Go command. John 15 and verse 16 says, You did not choose me, Jesus says, You did not choose me. But I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. And that your fruit should remain. Go and bear fruit, Jesus says. Are we going and bearing fruit, spiritual fruit, for God? Or are we clinging on to something? Something's got out hold of us, or we got a hold of it, and we're not going and bearing fruit. There was another significant go command given to a woman caught in the sin of adultery in John 8, 11, and Jesus said, as you know, go and Sin no more. Go and sin no more. Is that a command we think we really is a command to us as well? Elsewhere in Scripture, go and sin no more. Are we obeying that command or are we clinging on to something that we shouldn't be clinging on to? Yes, brethren, we have some very important go commands in, in the Scriptures do we please Jesus like Mary did, who obeyed and she went? Or are we clinging and not going in all these very important ways that God has for us to go? He wants us, he cares about us, he wants us to go and he cares about how we go as well. 
Now, verse 18, as we, we read. Whoops. Verse 18, Mary went. When probably everything inside of her didn't want to leave his, Jesus' presence, with all her heart, all her soul, she didn't want him to go away, but she still was able to obey and to testify, to tell the disciples, he's alive, he's risen, he, he's well. There are many things that get in our way of going, things that we cling to, things that prevent us from continuing the mission of Christ. And one of them might not relate to everybody here. Um, this might, will relate to some people. That we want to stay at home and we want to think about all the theological questions. We want to understand everything in the Bible. We want to just know everything we can about the Bible. And we're so busy trying to understand it. We're, we're studiers of the word. We're hearers of the word. But Jesus says, go. Be not hearers of the word only, but be doers of the word. Maybe somebody listening, clinging to wanting to be theologically correct and, and not giving the priority to the go and make disciples of all nations, teaching them. Somebody might relate to this. Um, if you want to, wanting to stay at home and enjoy Christian TV and Christian music, Enjoying, uh, just praying, 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 praising, 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 enjoying the presence of God so much, but not getting out and going. Jesus says, go. And maybe part of this clinging to, to wanting to stay at home and just enjoy God and his word might be fear. We might be clinging to our fear of going out and telling people. That's a fear that Jesus says, you can overcome that fear. He says, do not be afraid. Fear not, for I am with you. I am with you to when? To the end of the age. So do not be afraid. Fear not. Another one, another thing that we might be clinging to that is stopping us from going as Jesus wants us to go. This is when my, my brother, my, um, the, the, the son of my father, he wanted me to share with you today. And one reason why some people, some Christians are not going is because of resentment that they have towards somebody else. My brother said that um, clinging to his resentments about other people, things he resented about other people, the fact he was clinging to that, it was why he was an alcoholic. And he says he's still an alcoholic, but he hasn't drunk for 10 years. Praise God. But he was clinging to resentment towards other people. He told me to read page 552 of the big book to you all today. And I thought I would. Page 552, this is of the Alcoholics Anonymous big book. He wanted me to read it because it helped him in a powerful way to overcome resentment towards people and to overcome his drinking problem. Let me read page 552 to you. A famous pastor said, in effect, if you have a resentment, you want to be free of it. If you will pray for the person or the thing you resent, you will be free of it. If you will ask in prayer for everything you want for yourself to be given to them, you will be free of it. Ask for their health, for the person that you resent. Ask for their good health. Ask for their prosperity. Ask for their happiness and you will be free. Even when you don't really want it for them and your prayers are only words and you don't mean it, 
Go ahead and do it anyway. Do it every day for two weeks and you will find you have come to mean it and to want it for them and you will realize that where you used to feel bitterness and resentment and hatred, you now feel compassion, understanding and love. It worked for me then and it has worked for me many times since and it will work for me every time I am willing to work at it. Sometimes I have to ask first for the willingness, but it too, it too always comes, but it too always comes, the willingness always comes. And because it works for me, it will work for all of us. As another great man says, the only real freedom a human being can ever know is doing what you ought to do because you want to do it. My brother said to me that this worked for him every time. He would go to page 552 when he was feeling resentment towards somebody, which was the why he was drinking his life away. He, he should be dead, really. But praise God, he's not dead. He cried out to God for help. He's not a Christian. But he prays for people who he, who he resents. He prays for people who have hurt him. And that helps him. And he also asked me to say to you, to anybody who has resentment, or any of you who has any habit that is, you're clinging to, that is holding you back from continuing the mission of Christ, or if you have any shortcomings, any character flaws that you're clinging to, that you're not believing that God can change in you, he said to me, just to tell you, and I agree with him, you have to take action. You've got to take action. You've got to be consistent in taking action. He would say, you've got to do it daily. Deal with whatever this problem is that you're clinging to. Or the past, if you're clinging to your past, or, or hurts, bitterness, resentment. If you're clinging to something that is stopping you from having the peace of God. And letting the love of God flow out from you. You've got to take action. It was like the second thing in the sermon series, the one thing that is most needed. Focus on that and take action. If it's resentment against somebody, pray for that person. Isn't that wonderful that a, a person who's not a believer took that on board and did it and, and felt the release from those feelings of hurt and bitterness because he worked at it. How much more, if we do, with the power of the Holy Spirit in us, how much more can we overcome these things that are holding us back, the past we're clinging to, the resentments we're clinging to, the hurts that we're clinging to, whatever we're clinging to. We need to say goodbye to that and go and continue the mission that Jesus has for us. One more, or two more, things that we cling to when, when God says go, things that we cling to that are holding us back from serving Christ as He deserves, from honouring Christ as He deserves. A common problem for us as Christians is clinging to our old life. Clinging to the way that we were before we became a Christian. And what do the scriptures say about the difference between before, when we weren't a Christian, and after, when we were a Christian? The difference between here and here, I'm getting doing this a lot each week now, I'm not going from here to, to here. The difference between here and here, this is the darkness. It's the difference between darkness and light. That 
should be the difference between us now and our past life before we accepted Christ. The difference is between darkness and light. And, and it says, what's happened to my PowerPoint? Never mind. We will forget it. Okay. It's come back. Oh, good. <laughs> Second Corinthians 5.17 It's telling us that we are new creatures. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away and all things have become new. We don't cling anymore to the old because we're new person in Christ. A new person with power of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we think, oh no, if you're not a Christian, sometimes they think, no, I can't step over to be a Christian because I'm not going to have the power to change. And I don't want to keep sinning. I really don't want to keep sinning and I'm doubtful that if I come over to be a Christian that I'll have the power to change. Believe me, don't worry about that. Trust in God. Trust in the power of the Holy Spirit. And take action each day. If you slip, if you fall, if you make a mistake, remember you have a Father. You have a Father who loves you, who's understanding. You're a good Father doesn't say, I don't want to know you when you slip up. A good Father is patient with you. A good Father wants to help you. We have a good Father who helps us. Fear not. He will give you the strength. Don't cling to the old path. Here's a really important passage of Scripture that helps us see the difference between what we were before and what we are now. Colossians 3 says, If then you were raised with Christ, that's us, seek those things which are above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. Don't cling to the things on the earth. Don't cling to the, the riches. Don't cling to the praises of those around us. Don't look for honour and glory in the things of the world. Look for the Look for the glory of God. Look for the praise of God. For you died. So there's this huge difference between before, when we're not a Christian, and after. For you died. We died. And your life is hidden with Christ in God. You're in Christ. We're in Christ. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with Him in glory. Amen. Amen. Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth. So this is the put to death your, um, your human nature, your flesh desires, your natural human desires for, for now it says some of these things, natural desire for fornication, for uncleanness, put it to death, passion, evil desire, put it to death, and covetousness, Put it to death. Don't de keep desiring and desire desiring more of what other people have and the, the, the things of this earth. Put it to death, which is idolatry, that kind of feeling. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. It's true, isn't it, though, as Christians, we, we do want to cling to the way our life was before. To, we do that too much. Things that, that we enjoyed so much before, that were the, the focus of our heart, were the focus of our life, those things can come back when we're a Christian. And our heart, can, if we're not, if our heart isn't focused on things above, if our heart isn't focused on on Jesus and on His love and on His work. We, and, and if we're not taking action every day and following God and praying and reading and putting it into practice, then there's an emptiness and we want to go back. 
and enjoy what we were doing before. But if we become a Christian and, and we get involved in, in serving others, loving our neighbour as ourselves, loving God with all our heart, or keeping His commandments, and His commandments are not a burden. His commandments are good and just and holy. If we're doing these things and being with Christ, we won't want to cling to the things back there because we, we love the things that God is doing in us. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Amen? Amen? Eh? Who gets joy when you're helping others? Yeah, amen? Eh? There's joy in it. There, there's peace in a life that is not a life with, with, with lies. Um, I, I think I wanted to read the next part of Colossians. It says, But now you yourselves are to put off all of these. Anger. Wrath. Same, same thing, isn't it? Anger, wrath. Anyway, malice. That's like resentment. Blasphemy. Filthy language. Goodbye. Goodbye, filthy language. Goodbye, wrath. Goodbye, anger. Goodbye, malice. Filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another. Do not lie to one another. Goodbye lies. Since you have put off the old man with his deeds, his actions, his works, and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. With when you, you, you're, you're a new creature, you're renewed by the renewing of the regeneration of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Why cling to the past? Why cling to the bad behaviours? Why cling to things that the fruit of them is not eternal? The fruit of, of all those shiny and nice things back there, the shiny things of the world, the fruit of them is an end, it's death. The wages of sin is death. Why, why want that fruit? No longer cling to that. We shouldn't cling to our reputation either. I think that this is a bit a, a difficulty for me in becoming a Christian. Oh, you, you're concerned about what you're friends and your family think of you, don't, aren't you? Who's experienced that? Or, or even before you become a Christian, you think, oh no, what will my friends think of me if I go over here? What will my family think of me? I remember sitting on a bus, reading a, feeling embarrassed, reading a Bible, trying to do it secretly so nobody could see, or, or, or reading a Bible, that's a rock, that's... I, oh, here I am again confessing, but we need to confess our sins to one another. I remember in my early days as a Christian just feeling embarrassed, or ashamed, because I wasn't brought up that way. Let's not cling to our old reputation, but people should know who we stand for. There shouldn't be any doubt that people know, yes, Jiang, you're a Christian. Phil, yes, we know he's a Christian. And he means it. He really means it. People should know that we are a Christian because we stand for Jesus. We stand for Yeshua. We stand for Yesu. That's who we stand for. Now, this sermon is about not clinging, but we can. Let's cling to Jesus spiritually. We can't cling to him physically, but let's cling to him spiritually. It was time, as I'm coming to the end now, it was time for Mary Magdalene to go and tell her brethren the good news that Jesus was alive. It was time for her to go and she went. She went just as she was commanded to. She went. And she testified. Don't ever underestimate the power of your testimony of what you have experienced. 
with Jesus. Don't ever underestimate the power of your testimony. I, I remember hearing Ji Young's testimony one day to me when she came to, yes, I remember one of your testimonies. When you came to New Zealand, you said, wherever I go, it's like God doesn't want to leave me alone. He's leading me to his people. Praise him. Don't ever underestimate the power of your testimony. People will remember your testimony. Share your testimony. Bringing the glory to Jesus. Because ultimately we testify of him. His light is the bright and shining light that we testify of. And what he has done in us and what he will do for you if you come from here <coughs> over to here. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. I pray if anybody listening hasn't made that decision to come over, baptized, obedient, telling others about who you found. You found Jesus and you found he's alive and, and he's good. It was time for Mary Magdalene to go and testify. Is it time for us to go and testify? Remember, we had three go commands. The first one was go and sin no more. The second one was to go and bear fruit. Fruit that will last forever. And we were told the Great Commission, continuing the mission of Jesus, go, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them all things whatsoever Jesus has commanded. Let, brethren, let's, let's go. Let's not cling. Mary was told not to cling to Jesus in that moment. The word today is let's not cling to anything that is holding us back from, from going. The closing song I've chosen is also a song of testimony. It's love lifted me. That's why I chose it and there's even the word clinging in it, but it's a positive cling, I believe. Ever to him I'll cling. Ever to Jesus I'll cling. Let's stand and let's sing.
close in prayer. Let's bow and thank you, Luke.